A warm welcome to everyone who has come here on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, to worship the risen Christ. For our worship service today, we will use the old common service as you find it printed in your bulletin. Let us begin our worship today by singing the opening hymn. You can sing that out of the bulletin or out of that Christian worship supplement book found in the pew. It's hymn 721. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us now confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Gracious God, in heartfelt repentance, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are sin-stained people by nature. Each day we have sinned and done things we ought not to have done and have not done that which we are to have been doing as your servants. We have not seen people in the loving way that you see them. We have not always been ready to care and quick to help. We do indeed deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within our hearts and lives, lead us into ways that reflect your goodness and love. 
Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God is loving and merciful. He sees us with loving eyes and graciously hears our supplications. By the command of our Lord and as his called and ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill toward man. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you only are holy, you only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father of lights, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good, that we may always make our petitions according to your gracious will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first scripture lesson for this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, is the lesson from the book of Acts recorded in Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 36. The lesson from the book of Acts will also serve as the sermon text for this morning. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please, come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Here ends the first scripture lesson. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. As the Father has loved me, so uh, have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. The Gospel of the Lord, praise be to you, O Christ. For our confession of faith today, we use the second article of the Athanasian Creed. It is furthermore necessary for eternal salvation truly to believe that our Lord Jesus Christ also took on human flesh. Now this is the true Christian faith. We believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, is both God and man. He is God, eternally begotten from the nature of the Father, and he is man born in time from the nature of his mother, fully God, fully man, with rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father as to his deity, less than the Father as to his humanity. And though he is both God and man, Christ is not two persons but one, one not by changing the deity into flesh, but by taking the humanity into God. One, indeed, not by mixture of the natures, but by unity in one person. For just as the rational soul and flesh are one human being, so God and man are one Christ. He suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose the third day from the dead. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming all people will rise with their own bodies to answer for their personal deeds. Those who have done good will enter eternal life, but those who have done evil will go into eternal fire. This is the true Christian faith. Whoever does not faithfully and firmly believe this cannot be saved. We continue by singing the hymn of the day. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon text for today is the lesson from the book of Acts, recorded in Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 36. I'll read the first verse of our text. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. And we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it started in 1964, a year after I was born, and it ran for eight seasons. I'm talking about the sitcom known as Bewitched. Actors played the part of Darren Stevens and his wife Samantha Stevens, who was a good witch. And who could forget Samantha's mom, Endora, the meddling mother-in-law who always liked to criticize her son-in-law, Darren. After a few seasons, a new character was added. Her real name was Erin Murphy. And she, of course, became Tabitha. Now, (coughs) Tabitha, of course, was a beloved character in the series. When mom wanted to do her little magic, you remember, what did she do? She would twitch her nose, right? But Tabitha was too young to do that, so she would take her finger and she would move her nose across her face. It is said of little Tabitha that she didn't realize her own strength. This is the Tabitha that most of us are are used to hearing about. But Luke, the author of the book of Acts, presents to us today a different Tabitha, a lady who lived in the ancient city of Joppa. The name Tabitha just is such a beautiful name. In, In Aramaic, it means gazelle, a lovely and graceful animal. Tabitha lived in Joppa, and I have visited that city. On my last day in Israel, we stopped at Joppa. And the tour guide said, well, not that long ago, the city was a haven for hippies and drug users. And now, today, it's uh, a community of artists and artisans. It's an artsy community. And so you walk the streets and you see all kinds of different art in the town. But for one reason or another, it's also a place where every Jewish married couple wants to go to have their wedding pictures taken. And so as we're walking through the streets of Joppa, it seemed like every street we went down, there was a bridal couple and they were getting their wedding pictures taken in the city of Joppa. Joppa is on the coast of the Mediterranean, and as you stand there and look north, you see the modern, busy city of Tel Aviv. But Tel Aviv and Joppa are so close to one another that Joppa is sometimes referred to as Tel Aviv Jaffa. Well, Luke, the author of the book of Acts, takes us today to the ancient city of Joppa. And there we learn, I think, a very simple lesson from our text. And the lesson would be this. Go with what you are good at. What was Tabitha good at? Tabitha was good at sewing. And we learn about 
the early Christians that were part of that New Testament Christian church, that often they were so moved by what Jesus had done for them in his suffering and death and resurrection that it affected their lives. For example, the church in Jerusalem, we hear about the believers that they had everything in common with one another. They shared their lives with each other. They ate meals together. They gathered around God's word on a regular basis. Some were so moved and disconnected now from earthly things that they sold their possessions and then they gave that money to the apostles. And we know how the apostles used that money. They made sure that the most vulnerable in the community, the widows, were cared for with the daily distribution of food. And when this work became too much for the apostles, they appointed seven deacons to oversee this important work. Well, anyway, Tabitha lived in Joppa. And we're not told if she was married, single. We're not told if she was a widow. We're not told if she was young or old. We have her lovely name, which unfortunately in the Greek is so crass sounding, right? Dorcas. I much, much prefer the lovely name Tabitha. But Luke tells us that Tabitha became ill and she died. Now, this might be shocking to our American ears. We're just not used to this. You know, somebody gets sick and dies. Oh, my goodness, that's just not how things are supposed to happen. Really? Since the fall into sin, this is the way things have always happened. My goodness, I was reading about Martin Luther and his wife, Catherine. They had six children. Two of their girls died, one before reaching the age of one and one at around age 12. This is what happened. You'd, you'd get a fever, there was no treatment for it, and you would die. And so Tabitha of Joppa died, and this left a huge hole, gaping hole, in the church there in the city of Joppa. So obviously, Tabitha was more than a needle and thread to the believers in that city. During her life, Tabitha was always doing good and helping the poor. This was Tabitha living her Christian faith. She likely had many, many skills, but her outstanding skill was her sewing ability. And so she plied this skill, especially on behalf of the widows in the city of Joppa. She sewed clothing. Now, sewing in those days was not as easy as it is today. I remember my mom, she, she used to sew clothing. She'd go to the fabric store, you know, Joanne Fabric, and she would you know, buy uh, some cloth and a pattern, and then she would lay the pattern out on that cloth, pin it down, cut out those pieces, and then and she'd get the Singer sewing machine out of the closet, and she would sew those things together. Wasn't that easy in the days of Tabitha? First, you had to spin the yarn, and then you had to weave the cloth, and then you had to put all of this together. But evidently, Tabitha was very, very proficient at this. Because at her wake, we find many widows in town came, and what did they put on display? The many, many pieces of clothing that Tabitha had sewn for them. Go with what you are good at. Go with what you enjoy. In that sitcom called Bewitched, little Tabitha didn't know her strength. This Tabitha knew her strength. Her strength, her ability was found in sewing. She found an outlet for her skill in making clothing for other people. She plied her skill to help others. And in this way, what did she do? She loved her neighbor as herself with needle and thread. Some might say to this, big deal, Pastor Bauer. 
I mean, so she sewed, great, she was a seamstress, whatever. Perhaps she could have used her time better if she was a Sunday school teacher or if she sang in the choir. Hmm, maybe she did those things as well. But this is the one outstanding feature of Tabitha. She used her skill to make sure that other people had clothing. And by doing that, she lived her faith and glorified God. There's a retired gentleman here in the village of Lake Zurich. I've never met him. I see him all the time. He walks the busy roads and highways in Lake Zurich. And as he walks, he picks up trash. Now, I don't know if that man's a Christian man or not, but if he is, this is his way of glorifying God. This is his way. This would be his way of living his faith. This would be his way of loving his neighbor as himself by making sure that the streets of this village are kept clean of trash. What are you good at? Has anyone ever said to you, oh, by the way, wow, you're really good at this. Or have you ever said to someone else, you're really good at this. That could be an indicator to them. Oh, wow. I didn't know that I was good at this. And, and that might be an encouragement then for them to take that skill and to use it in the service of others as a fruit of faith, as a way of loving neighbor as self. Today on Mother's Day, we think of moms. And we give thanks to God that they plied their skill on our behalf. And what was that skill? Nurturing, right? Our society today says about that, ah, that's unimportant. Who cares about that? But what, what could be, I mean, what's more important than that? All of us in this room have benefited from our mothers plying their skill in nurturing us and bringing us up. Go with what you are good at. Tabitha was good at sowing. Jesus is good at giving life to the dead. We learn that Peter the Apostle was not too far away from Joppa, about 11 miles. He was in a city called Lydda. And when Tabitha died, the church there sent two men with this very simple message. Please come at once. The people in Joppa did not dictate to Peter what they thought Peter should do. They didn't try to dictate to God what they thought God should do. They knew, of course, that God can do anything, but they just simply said, Peter, can you please come? And what did Peter find when he arrived? Well, he came to a wake. And of course, Tabitha's wake served the same purpose as any other wake, and that was to make sure that Tabitha was truly dead as she lied there in state, because of course you wouldn't want to bury somebody who was still alive. So her body was washed, and it was placed in an upper room. When Peter arrived, I'm guessing that Peter thought back to the day when he and James and John went with Jesus to the home of Jairus, whose daughter had died. They found the same thing, people wailing and mourning and grieving. And when Peter entered the room, we're told that there were many widows who had these pieces of clothing that they put on display for Peter, things that had been uh, put together by Tabitha. It must have been a heart-wrenching scene. But then Peter had everyone leave that room and he got down on his knees and prayed because, you see, he didn't really uh, know yet what Jesus' will was concerning Tabitha. Well, after praying, evidently, Peter got the answer and he stood up and he said to Tabitha, Tabitha, Get up. When Jesus talked to the daughter of Jairus, he said, Talitha kum, I say to you, young girl, get up, in Aramaic. 
Peter said, Tabitha, kum, Tabitha, get up. And then the mighty risen Jesus raised Tabitha to life. And Jesus did, of course, what he is good at. He's good at giving life to the dead. And now follows another touching scene. Tabitha sits up, and Peter takes her by the hand, and he helps her to her feet. He presents the living Tabitha to those widows and the other believers who had gathered. In effect, he said, Behold what the risen Christ has accomplished, giving life to the dead. Behold what Jesus is good at, namely, giving life to the dead. From that day on, I'm guessing the Tabitha was kind of like Lazarus. Lazarus, whom Jesus raised after being in the grave for four days. Lazarus was kind of like a rock star. People went out from Jerusalem to Bethany to see this guy. And I'm sure Tabitha was kind of the same. Everybody wanted to see her. Everybody wanted to touch her and talk to her. What's it like? I mean, you were dead and, and now you are alive. But there was another resurrection that took place in the city of Joppa when Tabitha was raised to life. She was physically raised, but then we're hurt, we hear that this news spread throughout Joppa and many people believed in Jesus because of this mighty work. In other words, the spiritually dead were raised to spiritual life when they came to faith in the one who is good at giving life to the dead. Go with what you are good at. To be good at something, you, of course, have to, first of all, master it. Tabitha, obviously, had mastered the art of putting clothing together. Jesus has mastered the art of giving life to the dead. Three times in the Gospels, we hear that during his life and ministry here, he did this. He raised the son of the widow of Nain. He raised the daughter of Jairus. He raised Lazarus from the dead after being in the grave for four days. When you are good at something, your, your name is associated with it. What could we call Tabitha? We could call her the Tabitha the seamstress. What do we call Jesus? We call Jesus the resurrection and the life because he has mastered this business of giving life to the dead. And the biggest and best way that we know this, of course, is what he did on Easter Sunday. On Easter, there was nobody there like Peter praying over the lifeless body of Christ. But on that day, by his mighty power, he reversed the irreversible, and he came out of that tomb alive, thus defeating the final enemy to be defeated, namely death. And he gave that same power and ability to give life to the dead to the apostles. And here, Peter displayed that power that obviously came from the risen Christ. And on the day that this miracle took place, one person was physically raised from the dead, but many also were raised spiritually when they were brought from death to life by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and I today are a part of that crowd. You and I, by God's grace, have been brought from spiritual death to spiritual life. And now we, like Tabitha and those early Christians, can do an assessment of ourselves and ask, hmm, let's see, what am I good at? What is that ability that God has given to me that I can ply in his service as a way of glorifying him? as a way of loving my neighbor as myself. After all, what has Jesus done for you? He calls you his friends. And more than that, he has shared with you everything that his, has come from his Father. No secrets with Jesus. Friends of the Savior. Well, yesterday I did a little bit of rummaging 
rummaged through the closet at home and I found them and there they are. At least there's a picture of them. Those are some slippers that were crocheted by my mom. Now when we were little kids, we would get Christmas presents, but we'd also always get a pair of slippers. And we loved those slippers. They were so very comfortable. We'd wear them around the house, and then we'd wear the bottoms off, and sometimes we'd try to patch them, you know, sew a piece of leather to the bottom of those slippers to try to make them last a little bit longer. I'm actually quite lucky to have my pair of slippers. I don't wear them because I don't want to wear them out. I want to keep them. This is something from my mom. But I'm quite lucky to have them because as our family grew bigger and bigger and there were grandkids and great-grandkids added to our family, everybody wanted a pair of slippers. And so it was kind of like, get in line. Take a number if you want a pair of slippers. Now, my mom was good at a lot of things. She was a talented uh, grade school teacher. She even trained student teachers. She was a church musician and could play the organ, pedals and everything. She raised seven kids. She directed choir. She was a very talented lady, but this was also one of her skills. And so what did she do? She went with what she was good at. She could sew these things while listening to the, the Brewers game. Uh, she could sew them while she was watching TV. And what does that mean for me today? I can be like those widows in the city of Joppa. I can put on display something that was sewn by a woman of faith as a simple way of glorifying Christ and loving neighbor as self. And what do I know about Jesus? I know that Jesus will raise my mom and all on the last day. And how do I know that? Why is it that I know that? Because that is what Jesus is good at. Amen. The peace of God that goes beyond all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. In our prayers today, we include a prayer for Bev Brungraber, who's having uh, physical difficulties, and for Noelle Turner, daughter of Lydia, and Daniel Turner, who's had a, been hospitalized and has had a racing heartbeat for the last week. We ask that the Lord in his mercy would hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by your Son, you have raised us from spiritual death to spiritual life. We believe your Son will do what he is good at on the last day, raising all to life. Until that day, grant that we, your people, may go with what we are good at, serving you with our time and abilities, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son, in his incarnation, took on our human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He submitted to his mother, honoring and obeying her, so fulfilling the commandment where we have not. On this Mother's Day, graciously accept our thanksgiving for our mothers, whom you have given to us. Teach us to honor them aright, loving, obeying, and giving thanks for them, as is fitting in your sight 
Strengthen all women with child and give them safe delivery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you rule this world by your established authorities in ways that we do not always understand, yet in the name of Jesus, we may ask you anything freely as friends and sons. Bless our nation's leaders and cause them to serve wisely for our good. Give earthly peace and justice that is in accord with your commandments and the order you have revealed. Bring an end to injustice, violence, and disdain for your truth. And let us receive all good things with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, the giver of all that is good, grant your healing and support to all who are in sorrow or need or sickness or adversity, especially remembering today Bev Brungraber, who is facing declining health, and Noel Turner, who has had an irregular heartbeat. Give them also the gift of your grace to accept and bear their crosses with faith in you, that finally they would be prepared to depart this life and receive the gift of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, at the death of your Son, you gave the testimony of your Spirit in the water and blood that poured from his wounded side. Grant that having received this testimony in the water of baptism, we may also receive it in the body and blood of Jesus in the Holy Supper, and so overcome the world by our faith in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, in whose name we join in praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for you have called us as your people and have shown us your amazing love in all our days. Assured of your mercy, we come before you asking that we would receive your blessing with heartfelt thanksgiving. Pour out upon us the gift of your Holy Spirit and grant that we may receive the body and blood of our Lord as a guarantee of our salvation and a foretaste of the feast to come in your eternal kingdom. Together with angels and archangels and with all who rejoice in the courts of heaven, we praise your glorious name. Oh, oh, oh. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh, oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Oh, oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us oh Christ Lamb of God 
During the distribution, we will sing the Easter hymn like the golden sun ascending. All things are now ready. Let us come. And eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ given into death for all of your sins take and drink this is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins may this same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting depart in peace amen This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. And eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May this same body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you have again welcomed us at your table of grace. Grant that this sacrament, which we have now received, strengthen us in faith and in loving service to one another. As we have shared in the blessings of your table, grant that we live each day as your people, who see those around us as you see them, and love them as you love them. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing the closing hymn.
that they are gifts among us to cherish and to bless. Good morning. There are a few announcements. First of all, thank you to the Church Council for serving Mother's Day breakfast before the service today. I'm guessing there's also a ton of food down there after, uh, to be enjoyed after the service. In about 15 minutes, we'll start with Sunday school and adult Bible class. Adult Bible class is held here in the chapel. Since today is Mother's Day, there's no uh, confirmation class. Tomorrow night, we'll have our preschool open house from 6.30 to 8, and the Tone Chime Choir is scheduled to practice uh, at 7. This Thursday marks the 40th day after Jesus' resurrection from the dead. It's the day on which he ascended into heaven. Our green team will meet on the great day of ascension, and that, will, uh, that meeting will start at 6.30 p.m., and men's Bible class will resume at Friday with Friday class at 11.30. We uh, added a student this past week to our preschool roster, so now I believe uh, we are at 26 children, but again, if you know of anybody uh, who has preschool age children, please refer them to our, our preschool and especially to the open house that's gonna be held tomorrow night. Today was rather cold outside and there was threat, the threat of rain, so we had our church service indoor, but again, uh, we'll be trying to have our service outdoor as much as possible depending on the weather and you'll be notified about uh, what's gonna happen, usually probably on Friday afternoon. Again, there is something to eat and drink. It's all served downstairs in the fellowship hall directly below the chapel. Welcome to the visitors who've joined us for worship today. We're, we're glad that you're here. Please come again. Those are the announcements. Mm -hmm. 